Admiral, we're in position. My world famous series, Every Ship in Star Wars, returns this week with Return of the Jedi. The final film of the original trilogy introduced several beloved ships and a couple of mystery ones, too. Let's take a look at them, shall we? I'm Joey from Radio Free Coruscant, and this is Every Ship and Vehicle in Return of the Jedi. Alright, hang on. The film begins with a shot of the Death Star 2, a bigger and more powerful version of the battle station. It is approached by an unidentified Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer, which launches Vader's Lambda Shuttle ST-321 and two TIE fighters to escort it. Two more Imperial 2s can be seen behind it. By the way, the main difference between the Imperial 1 and Imperial 2, or at least the most obvious visible difference, is the sensor mast between the spheres on the command tower. The Imperial 1 had a tall, X-shaped tractor beam targeting array, while the Imperial 2 has a thin rectangular communications antenna instead. The main weapons are also different, but it can be difficult to see this, especially in the original trilogy. The type of antenna on top is the easiest way to tell which type you're seeing at a glance. ST-321 lands in a hangar on the Death Star, housing a TIE bomber. Moving to Jabba's palace, the Hut Crime Lord sits on a dais made from a large rectangular repulsor sled. This vehicle held his throne and a barbecue on which gerba meat was cooked. Jabba would soon take his party to his private yacht, a Ubrickian Industries LOKD-57 luxury sail barge named the Katana. It is accompanied by two Bantha II cargo skiffs, which were small, rugged, repulsor lift platforms designed to move small amounts of cargo around spaceports and warehouses. The sail barge and one of the Bantha skiffs are swiftly destroyed, and our heroes take the other skiff and leave Tatooine in the Millennium Falcon and Red 5, Luke's T-65 X-Wing. Back at the Death Star, we see a large squadron of TIE fighters patrolling around it, as well as our first look at the TIE Interceptor. Among the hundreds of TIEs orbiting the battle station, there are several with very different solar collector proportions. Are these a production error, or a long-forgotten TIE variant? Who knows? The Emperor arrives in his customized Lambda shuttle. It has a gray stripe down the nose to differentiate it from other Lambdas, a more luxurious passenger cabin, and allegedly a cloaking device. Next, we move to the Rebel fleet rendezvousing at Sullust. The fleet at this time consists of Home 1, an MC-80A heavy star cruiser, a standard MC-80 heavy star cruiser, presumably the Liberty, at least two CR-90 corvettes, at least two GR-75 medium transports, at least one Nebulon B frigate, presumably the Redemption, three X-wings, three A-wings, and several unidentified ships. In Home One's hangar, we can see two X-Wings, three A-Wings, a Y-Wing, a Rebel Troop Cart, the Millennium Falcon, and the Shuttle Tidarium. We also see a B-Wing in one of the next shots. Outside, we can see a CR-90, two GR-75s, and an unidentifiable ship. As Tidarium departs, we see Home One, two GR-75s, a CR-90, and a Nebulon B. When they arrive at Endor, they encounter the second Death Star, the Super Star Destroyer Executor, and two Imperial II Star Destroyers. After landing on the forest moon, our heroes encounter some scout troopers on Aerotech 74Z speeder bikes. These fast and reliable bikes were one of the most common ground vehicles in the Imperial Army. Later, we see ST-321 land at the Imperial base on the moon, where it is met by Tempest-1, the lead at of Tempest Force. Moving back to the Rebel fleet at Sullust, we can see that more Rebel ships have arrived. 
This time we see Home 1, Redemption, an unidentified Mon Calamari cruiser, at least 4 GR-75s, at least 3 CR-90s, the Millennium Falcon, 5 X-Wings, 3 B-Wings, an MC-80 heavy star cruiser named the Liberty, another unnamed Nebulon B, an unidentified Mon Calamari ship, an unidentified ship that looks a bit like a Klingon bird of prey with no wings, an unidentified ship that looks like a rounder version of a Dreadnought-class heavy cruiser, a ship that looks like a bulkier CR-90 Corvette, a Brahatok-class gunship, also known as the Dornian gunship, two A-wings, and two Y-wings. Many additional starfighters are also launched once they arrive at Endor. We also see several additional MC-80 and MC-80A heavy cruisers that were not present at Sullust and must have met them along the way, including the Independence and Nautilian. They are met by the Executor and at least 33 Imperial 1 and 2 class Star Destroyers, which launch several squadrons of TIE Fighters and Interceptors. Back on the surface of the moon, numerous ATSTs of Tempest Force and 74Z speeder bikes engage in combat with the Rebel Ground Troop, which the Ewoks destroy in increasingly comical ways. The Ewoks have a vehicle of their own in the form of simple gliders, which bombard the stormtroopers with dropped rocks. Chewbacca and two Ewoks also managed to hijack the ATSD Tempest Scout II which they used to destroy several other AT-STs. Unfortunately, the space battle isn't going quite as well as the ground battle. The Emperor reveals that the Death Star is fully armed and operational by destroying several Mon Calamari cruisers, starting with the Liberty, then the Nautilian. The Rebel fleet engages the Imperial fleet at point-blank range to try to avoid the Death Star's blasts, where they encounter a Tector-class Star Destroyer named Harbinger. The Tector was largely the same as the Imperial-class Star Destroyer, but it lacked the large ventral hangar bay. Once the Rebels on the ground destroy the shield projector, the assault on the Death Star begins. Lando on the Millennium Falcon leads two X-Wings, two A-Wings, and a Y-Wing into the Death Star, pursued by three TIE Fighters and three TIE Interceptors. A disabled A-Wing destroys the bridge of the Executor and causes it to steer into the Death Star, destroying the Super Star Destroyer, and causing significant damage to the station. Minutes later, Wedge and Lando destroy the Death Star's power regulators, causing its reactor to overload and explode. They narrowly escape alongside Luke in Vader's shuttle, and regroup with the fleet to watch the destruction. This fleet somehow seems to have more ships than they started with, with three CR-90s, at least 13 GR-75s, six unidentified multi-engine Mon Calamari cruisers, six unidentified two-engine Mon Calamari cruisers, and two Nebulon B frigates including Redemption. MC-80A's Home 1 and Independence should be in there somewhere too, but none of the ships seem to match what they should look like. The two-engine ships have the right shape, but are missing most of the engines. The many-engined ships have enough engines, but they aren't in the right place to be MC-80As like Home 1. They could be Liberty-type MC-80s, but they lack the wings the standard MC-80 has. Regardless, we know Home 1 and Independence survived, so they must be around somewhere. In the original cut of the film, the fleet shot would be the end of this video, but in the special edition, new scenes were added to the victory celebration showing citizens across the galaxy rejoicing at the Emperor's death and the beginning of the end of the Empire. Starting on Endor, we see several odd squarish starfighters that I don't recognize setting off fireworks over the forest. Great idea, by the way. Next, we see Cloud City and two Storm 4 cloud cars. Following that is Tatooine, where we see an Incom T-16 Skyhopper like Luke used to own flying over Mos Eisley, as well as two hover pods of some kind. They remind me a little of the pods used in the Senate. Perhaps they are normally used by the wealthier residents of the city to watch pod races from above. On Naboo, we see a squadron of N1 starfighters do a flyby. Then on Coruscant, two Easy Ride passenger airspeeders witness the toppling of the statue of Palpatine. There are also a great number of ships stuck in Coruscant traffic in the distance. 
Most are unidentifiable and or obscured by fireworks, but the top left ship resembles an HCT-2001 Dragon Boat class Ryugo 905, a bulk freighter popular among Trandoshans. Back on Endor, the mystery fighters make another pass marking the end of this video. It's a little odd that the last ships we see are ones we can't identify, so maybe they're supposed to be X-Wings filmed using a low-quality model made for background plates instead of the normal miniature. If you squint, they do look like X-Wings with really thick S-foils, so I bet that's what they are. And that's every ship and vehicle in Return of the Jedi. Let me know which one is your favorite, and if I showed you any that you didn't know about before, or if I missed any, in the comments. I'd also really like to hear how you think I should do this for series like The Clone Wars. I'm planning to do one video per season of TV, but that will make a few videos be potentially repetitive and make it take until April 2025 to get through all of the current Star Wars content at a rate of one every ship video every other week like I have been doing. That doesn't really bother me, but I'm curious to hear what everyone else thinks. Anyway, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single installment. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. RFC, out.